So a new confrontation in the fight over records and a big conference call for the Democrats tonight. Yeah, they're going to lay out in the conference call what they plan to do, the Democratic leaders, in the days and weeks ahead. And what the Democrats are probably going to emphasize is that they're going to mount a rather aggressive investigation to look into potential obstruction of justice. They want to have significant hearings, Bill Barr being the first one, followed by the special counsel, Robert Mueller. Other individuals will undoubtedly be called before the committee as well, people who were outlined in that report, like Don McGahn, he is one of five White House, former White House officials who the committee has already authorized subpoenas for. They will soon be issued probably to those individuals to get records and testimony. But there was a faction within the Democratic caucus that is pushing the leadership to go harder, to push for articles of impeachment, to begin impeachment proceedings. And that's what Nancy Pelosi and her lieutenants at the moment are trying to tamp down. Now, at the same time, investigations pursuing on other fronts, including into the president's finances. And you saw that lawsuit filed today by the Trump Organization to prevent a financial firm from turning over documents related to the uh, then individual Trump's uh, allegations that he may have inflated his net worth to purchase the Buffalo Bills football team. Those allegations was, uh, were raised by Michael Cohen in his public testimony. The Trump Organization says that that subpoena by Elijah Cummings to get those records exceeds constitutional limits. They're trying to prevent that firm from complying with the subpoena. So a new front in this fight between the White House and House Democrats over oversight and investigations. Now it's up to the courts to decide what the Democrats can see. John. New front. It's getting hard to keep track of all the legal challenges facing the administration and the question of how much power does Congress have. Mono, appreciate the live reporting from the Hill with me in studio to share the reporting and their insights. CNN's Abby Phillip, Heather Cagle with Politico. Jackie Kucinich of The Daily Beast, and Eliana Johnson with Politico. Uh, I want to come back at the top to what the president just said there. At the end of the Easter egg roll, he was doing a lap around the White House lawn. He said, nobody disobeys my orders. Now, if you read the Mueller report, the special counsel says the president's aides saved him from himself by repeatedly ignoring, deferring, punting, walking away, waiting a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not just in the Mueller report. From hour one of this administration, we have had aides telling us, pay no attention to what the president says, watch what we do. He says and tweets a lot of things, and we massage them or ignore them. Um, I guess I understand it as a test of his macho, um, but it's just not true that nobody disobeys his orders. <laughs> it's definitely not true, but I think that one of the things that really drives this president crazy is the perception that he's being managed by his aides. And so I think that's what he's really pushing back against. And um, the president, I think, the, the Mueller report paints a picture of, the, of a president who's not so much managed by his aides, but simply disregarded. I think it also raises a question about how the country is being governed. Um, the president is duly elected, and in many cases, the country is being governed by his senior aides, who simply, um, on many important questions, are exercising their own best judgment. Uh, these people were not elected, um, but you know, in, in a real crisis, um, are, is the president simply going to be disregarded by aides who are going to exercise? exercise their best judgment in this question, um, it, it, it's, it's troubling. Well, and, and to, to, to that point, forgive me, I just want to just get on the record when the president says something like this, read the Mueller report. If you don't trust the media, read the Mueller report. This is not 18 angry Democrats. This is Corey Lewandowski in his own words under penalty of perjury. Hope Hicks in her own words under penalty of perjury. Don McGahn in his own words under penalty of perjury and on and on and on saying the president tells us to do things and we just don't do it. Well, the White House counsel's job is to protect the office, not necessarily the president as a man himself. And, it, it, and if you actually look at the Mueller report, that seemed to be what Don McGahn was doing by ignoring the man, the current occupant of the office's orders, because he, he obviously Trump would have gotten himself in a lot of trouble if everyone had just said, oh, yes, sir, and done what and done what he wanted. So uh, in some cases, these aides were doing what their jobs actually are. Right, and, and so the president's team is pushing back. Again, all of these aides to the president. Their argument now essentially is that all these people the president hired lied. Because if you read the Mueller report, they're quoted. It's not like they're not summarizing what they said. Mm -hmm. They're quoting what they said. Uh, and they were all under penalty of perjury when they gave these interviews. So the president's defense is everybody I hired is now lying about what I did, if you boil it all down. This is one of the president's former lawyers, John Dowd. Saying they say, Rudy Giuliani said this yesterday on State of the Union with Jake Tapper, John Dowd today on Fox News, essentially saying the president's White House counsel, who through his attorney has stood by everything he said in the Mueller report, they're saying, especially the incident of the president calling Don McGahn, saying fire Bob Mueller, John Dowd says it never happened. 
When did uh, President Trump say, hey, uh, go out there and fire Mueller? He never did. Oh, it's an F, complete F. It's so poorly done, there are things missing. There, there, there are parts of it that just aren't right. And I would say they had a junior writer from the New York Times do it. Again, it quotes people by name. We could dispute it. But here's my question there. I get the public relations part. John Dowd and Rudy Giuliani, both veteran attorneys, uh, out making a public relations case, not a legal case, for the president. But if they're going to continue to say this, does that not open the avenue for Democrats in Congress to say, well, you say it would be excessive for us to call all these people back up. Yeah. If you're going to dispute what Don McGahn says, have a seat, Mr. McGahn, raise your hand, answer questions. Yeah, I mean, that, that's such an important point because the difference between John Dowd sitting on a Fox News set and Don McGahn sitting in front of federal investigators is that it's a crime to right. lie to federal investigators. And so John Dowd can say whatever he wants in public, but if, for example, all of these individuals go over to Capitol Hill and tell their stories under the penalty of perjury, that would be a completely different story. And it has to, you have to wonder, you know, the White House is expending a lot of time right now trying to undermine the, the building blocks of the Mueller report that they also claim vindicates and exonerates right. the president on all counts. Uh, what's left if you're saying that all the stories that went into this amount to absolutely nothing? Uh, and it would be one thing if the Mueller report were just standing on its own, but it's building on two years of reporting in the media that basically corroborate uh, this pattern of behavior. Remember uh, the Woodward book talking about um, uh, Gary Cohen taking papers off of the president's desk because right. uh, t pulling out out of a South Korea free trade agreement and NAFTA would be uh, devastating to the economy, would endanger national security. There are all these stories that have been out there for two years. What's in the Mueller report is just building on that same pattern. So that's why it's so hard to deny. One other thing too. Rudy Giuliani was out on several Sunday shows this weekend saying, uh, not only questioning Don McGahn's testimony, but at the same time saying that the president would have been within his rights to fire yeah. Bob Mueller and was within his rights to fire James Comey, which raises the question, um, you know, why isn't the defense of the president that, he could yes, he did do this, no. and he was fully within his rights to do it, and he was fully within his rights to um, fire uh, James Comey. Um, so I think we're, we're hearing the president's lawyers talk out of two sides of their mouth. No, it didn't happen, but if it happened, uh, the president was but acting happened, lawfully. Okay. I, I just want to note, it's hard to tra keep track of this stuff sometimes, because number one, Democrats have a conference call tonight to debate the impeachment question. Number two, the chairman of the House Oversight Committee has just responded to a new lawsuit filed by the president and his business, the Trump Organization, challenging a Democratic subpoena. The subpoena wants financial records from an accounting firm. Uh, they're trying to look and see whether the president has told lies about his or done anything wrong. Uh, the chairman, Elijah Cummings, saying the president has a long history of trying to use baseless lawsuits to attack his adversaries. The chairman saying there's simply no valid legal basis to interfere with the subpoena from Congress. So this goes now to the courts, one of many challenges we Great. expect to end up in the courts. How are the Democrats dealing with this split? Uh, the leadership, which says, let's deal with this lawsuit. Let's try to get these records. Let's have oversight hearings. Let's maybe put Don McGahn in the chair. Mm -hmm. And the other ones who say, read the Mueller report. Let's impeach tomorrow. Yeah, I think getting back to your point earlier, telling folks to read the report, we've seen a shift from like some rank and file Democrats who did take the weekend and read the 400 page document. And they're like, wow, this is a lot worse than we initially thought. There may not be a smoking gun, but there's a lot of really bad stuff in there. And they really are agonizing over the impeachment question. But then you have Speaker Pelosi, who's been here before. She's been in Congress for 30 years, and she does not want to go there. And so I think on the call today, we'll actually have a leadership call about 15 minutes before the broader caucus call. And I think they're all going to try to get on the same page and then go to the caucus and say, hey, slow down. And so two big members here, the Speaker calls the shots, number one. Her deputies will try to count the votes, if you will, and mm -hmm. corral the sheep. Uh, Jerry Nadler's the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. Adam Schiff, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee. Two fierce critics of President Trump in all of this. Listen to their take on the impeachment question. Do you think this is impeachable? Yeah, I do. I do think that this, if proven, if proven, uh, which hasn't been proven yet, some of this, uh, if proven, some of this would be impeachable, yes. All right, Obstruction Cong of justice, if proven, would be impeachable. Uh, I think without question within the realm of impeachable offenses. When Mitch McConnell will not stand up to the president either, uh, it means that an impeachment is likely to be unsuccessful. Uh, now, it may be that we undertake an impeachment nonetheless. If that's the, it's like they, Democrats saying, sure, 
there's an impeachable case. Mm -hmm. The question is, is it politically worth making it when not one Republican has raised their hand to say, we'll be with you, which meaning the House, assuming they kept all the Democrats, could impeach. The Senate, no way, will convict. Yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing the debate play out in real time, which is really interesting because you saw Nadler really pause, which he hasn't done before. And like, clearly, he too is agonizing over this question and he, his committee would be the one that would start this, right? But he's one of the senior lawmakers that's been here for a long time and they saw what happened when Republicans pursued impeachment against Clinton. And, and you alluded to this um, a little bit there, John, but that's assuming all the Democrats vote for impeachment, which is an assumption because there will, there, it is very possible there will be Democrats probably not from from probably from districts that Trump won in 2016 that would not vote for impeachment. So there's there's a lot of uh, factors here, not only what it would do with the country, all of that, but just internal factors mm -hmm. that House Democrats like Nancy Pelosi, Jerry Nadler and like will have to weigh.